Okay, in this video, we're gonna, this is Thor again, and we're gonna go over a, a muzzle training video. Now, um, first of all, a couple things with the muzzle. This is a Baskerville muzzle, it's plastic. You see he does not have a good association with it, yes. Um, and this is plastic only, so they can actually bite through it. Now, when you're sizing a muzzle, and these guys, this is the most common one that people get. Well, the one that everybody wants to get is the one you shouldn't get, which is a snout muzzle. It goes around their snout and prevents them from opening their mouth. That can be dangerous because the dog needs to be able to open its mouth and breathe heavy. Um, when it's stressed out, which is usually when you're using a muzzle, that's, that's not a, a muzzle you want to use, but it's the one that looks better, so it's what everybody uses. Now, Baskerville has no plastic in it or no metal net. So a dog technically can bite through it. But I was telling the guardian, if you're using a muzzle, you should think of it like if you're a mountain climber and you have a safety line. You don't count on it. You hope to God you never need to use it. So for me, I use a muzzle only when I'm pretty sure that the dog is going to be okay with everything, but I need to make sure nobody bites, or, uh, the dog doesn't bite or whatever it is. But if the dog feels triggered and is, is going off, then you shouldn't be exposing to whatever that is in the muzzle. You only want to use the muzzle as a safeguard and not to put Put the muzzle on, take the dog safe, and now put them in bad situations, which is what a lot of people do, and that will be traumatic for your dog. It will make them not want to use the muzzle and more likely to bite. Okay, so um, the other thing, when you're sizing a muzzle, typically, and again, you see the, the strong response that he has, and so we're going to go over a nice, easy way to help. Yeah, I know. Condition that. He did come back for it, so. Um, is uh, you want to actually have a tennis ball, or in his case, maybe a small, like the small tennis ball, or... Uh, so that they in their mouth when you size the muzzle so that they can open their mouth properly wearing the muzzle. Now a lot of the muzzles are a lot bigger than this and this is I think why people like this one uh, because it looks smaller but it's not as healthy for the dog. We want to be able to breathe properly because again when they're using the muzzle they should, they're going to be probably a little stressed. Now my dog Quest, if I pull up this muzzle and hold it like this, he runs over and shoves his nose in this muzzle because I've done it in a very positive way. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to do a little bit of what's called a conditioned emotional response. And I'm going to kind of fold all the stuff in so that we don't have a lot of cable uh, things that are flopping around. Uh, and I put it behind my back. Thor! Can I give him? Sorry. Give him one, but don't give him any more because we want him over here for the video. Thor! Here you go, buddy. Yes. All right. So now you don't have to put him in a sit. I'm going to put him in a sit. Just make it easy. So I, he looks at it. Yes. Yes. And if he's staring at this hand, you put this hand behind your back. So, yes, and then he gets a treat. Yes, and he gets a treat. So all I'm saying, all you have to do is look at it. You don't have to put it on. Yes, and it goes away. I say yes for looking at it, then it goes away, then he gets a treat. Sit. That was, I moved it too close to him. Sit. So some of this I'm going to have to just describe uh, without actually doing. Yes. So I'm just flashing it and keeping it at my hip. Yes. And eventually, he gets to the point where he can move a little bit further closer. Yes. And if he only, if he's just starts staring at this hand, you might switch him and put the muzzle here and the treats over here. But you see that muzzle in front? He just moved away. So if he starts moving away, then he's saying, I'm uncomfortable here. Yes. Good job, buddy. And so that we want to go ahead and uh, stop the deal. And you also practice this in a lot of different variety. Get that little piece right there. It's sticking to me. Okay. So, yes. And if he doesn't look at it, it just goes away and I don't mark it. Yes. Now right there, that was a little bit much too much of a move for him. And, and now one other thing, this is at the end of a one hour session. This is again, should be something you do very, very easily. Now what I'm gonna do is make it static and see if I can get him to come closer to it. Yes. And this could be a little shaping exercise as well. So you put it down and if he looks at it, then I'm gonna say yes and give him that treat. I'm gonna put the treat back here. Now, at, right now, I'm in the bigger distraction, but if you normally put it down, he just looks at it, and then yes, you give him a treat. Now, to spike the punch, so to speak, I might go like this. That's actually, I made it harder than I normally would like. Yes. Yeah, this is exciting footage. Yes. So that's shaping. He turned towards it on his own. And when he did, I said the marker word, and then I pet him. But I'm holding still. I'm, I'm narrating a little bit. And so to start off, you might just put a treat there. And all if, for some dogs, all just approaching is enough. And I just had to do that again. And he practiced approaching. Yes. So you see, he explored in there. Yes. So what are we doing? We're creating a situation where he's initiating the contact with the muzzle himself. And then he's being rewarded for doing so. And if he doesn't, nothing happens. There's no punishment. And I'm not enticing him to, yes. 
So for shaping, the first thing is really just looking at it, yes, and then leaning towards it, and then eventually touching it, and then eventually sticking your nose in. Now the Guardians here worked with another trainer, unfortunately, yes, who didn't do a very good job with them, and I'm not a trainer, more behavior person, um, but she suggests smearing peanut butter, and you can do that. Um, I usually prefer not doing it with the, uh, uh, I'll describe the next couple steps. Let's see if we can get one, one or two more looks. And if he gets stuck and he doesn't look at it again, just drop a treat near it. Again, like the hand video I talked about above, we're just creating a situation where he does the action a couple times on his own. And that was pretty close, buddy. That was almost there. But you see his body, he's a little, he, I wouldn't say stiff, but he's not relaxed. Um, but yes. Um, yes. There we go. Um, so again, to, for a warm up, if he has difficulty with this one, just put it there. If, and if he, yes. And if he won't come near it, put it over here. It doesn't have to be, he doesn't have to go all the way to it. Yes. And what we should see, like I said, is him going and do it further and further. And every once in a while, you maybe put one in there. So, yes. So, yes. So, we want him, yes, touching that muzzle. Before, now when I'm holding the muzzle, that's different. But when it's on the floor, it's not moving around. Yes. And right there, that wasn't the full criteria we're at, but it was a little bit of a motion of, go yes, getting towards it. Probably should have waited there. He probably would have gone a little bit further. So, we'll see if we can achieve that a little bit. Um, yes. So this is going to be something, again, I'd like you to do and maybe, uh, yes, uh, one or, you know, maybe two, three minute maximum. Yes. I'm giving him what we call a jackpot because that was a good move that he just did on his own. So if he does it on his own like that, yes. So he's starting to learn if I nudge this muzzle, I get a treat. Yes. And again, we're doing it completely positive and we're force free. He's doing all the work himself. And so we'll see if we get one more, and then I'm gonna talk about the next couple steps. You probably won't like it, you probably wanna move away. Now, if he gets stiff, start staring at his hard eyes or things like that, do a timer when you're doing this so you know how long you're at it, and don't practice the failure. Practice successfully so that it's just a good positive experience for him. Yes, and I'll put one more in there. There we go, oh, that's not quite in there, is it? Yes, there we go. Okay, so now he's a little bit more relaxed, Yes. I didn't think we would get to that point. Let's move you over here so we have better camera presence. Yes. Yes. That was a late yes. 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 Now the Guardians, yes, might not have as quick a success as I am. Yes. I didn't try to put this on him. I haven't done a lot of the things, yes, that they didn't know were things he didn't like. So I kind of come in with a clean slate. Now eventually I can do it like this, yes. And he looks at the treats and sometimes I'll hold my hand like this and I'll put the treat in there, yes. Dropping him everywhere on my door, yes. So what's happening? Same thing with the hand video, he's approaching, He's getting the treat on his own. Uh, he's doing all of it, all the work. Yeah, that was a, that's a hard one, isn't it? That was in a weird place. But that was extended time that he's wearing that. Now, eventually, he gets to the point where he can hold it up like this, and he comes over and he shoves his nose in, and then you're going to feed, uh, you know, and again, you can hold it like this. Let me try to do it as a, there we go. Yes. Because when I'm putting on, that's how I'm going to put it on. Now this is very quick. I wouldn't expect you guys to get the same results this quick. Yes. And eventually you get to the point where you can, uh, you could put a little peanut butter there. For this part, that would, when I have peanut butter there, then I might move the strap a little bit off to the side. And you see right there, that's a little bit much for him. So eventually my knees are going to sleep. So eventually you want to get to the point where you can kind of have this going this way. And eventually you're going to put it around. Now when you do it, this part here goes on top the part here attaches to the collar. You don't have to worry about that now. But eventually you get to the point where, then you, um, when you get to this point, and again, the dog is very relaxed, and they're, they're putting their treat, they're holding it, and you're just feeding treat after treat after treat with them with a muzzle on their nose, but not attached. Before you get to the point where you gradually move the strap a little bit, and then give them a treat. Uh, Mark can give them a treat. And then do the other side. And one side might be more difficult than the other. Uh, eventually when you get to the point where you can put it on, where you attach it, you attach it, and then I just start feeding treats as fast as I can, or I attach it and immediately take it off. 
because I don't want him to think I'm trapped now it's going to be on for a long time. Once I can actually have it on, I only worry about putting these two sides on. I don't worry about the top at first or the collar. Um, you want to prevent him from pawing at it or rubbing his nose on it. You want to be thinking, when this son of a gun goes on, I get a copious amount of treats. So at first, I mean, like almost as fast as you can give them to him. But after a while, then you're starting to back it off a little bit, little, you know, maybe half a second between each treat, then a full second, then two seconds. But if he goes back to pawing at it, go and speed up your pace. We don't want any pawing at it. And then basically, you want him to start wearing this when you don't need him to wear it. I keep on muzzle training until I can put this on and the dog will lay down and take a nap with it on and not pawing at it before I ever start using it like at a vet office or pistol like that where it might be uh, problematic. So this is kind of an abridged version of it, but you saw how quickly he warmed up to it because we made uh, a, a, it a positive. So the first stage is both hands are behind our back. Come here, Kobe. Come here. I called you Kobe. Your name is not Kobe. Um, there's a Kobe in the, in the picture, but it's not him. All right. So the first stage is I, he looks at it. Yes, I go away. Then eventually I hold it. I can, I can move it a little closer and closer and closer. And at this stage, I'm holding all the stuff in. And eventually then I wait for him to, uh, and I can even just hold it out here. Yes. Just like there. And he looks at it and I give him the treat. But eventually you want him to lean towards it, then to touch it. Um, and then you can do the static stuff that I showed you as well. Again, to try to do this two to four times a day in short one to two minute practice sessions and try to exercise them a little bit before first. Or if he really likes walks, do whatever activity he really likes after this. So when you do this, then I go for my favorite walk or what are my favorite things are. Um, and go really slow at his pace. If you have questions on it, message me. Um, this is my buddy uh, Thor, and these are some tips on how you can use positive reinforcement to muzzle train a dog.